Alright y'all, we're back again. This afternoon we're going to talk about some of the MVA uh, challenging questions that you're going to get uh, when you go to take that permit test. Last time I talked about your driving book. It's very important for you to go through this manual. It's just not enough to say that you know how to drive and you're going to pass this test. Every question, there are 25 questions on the test, you have to get at least an 88% correct to pass. So that means you can only get three questions wrong. But if you get that fourth question wrong, the screen goes red and you have failed the test. So I'm saying this to say, get your book that I gave you, go through it and highlight it. I highlight the questions. Wherever you see bullets, these are answers to the questions. Highlight those things that are difficult for you so you can go back and remember them. But back to the challenging questions. One of them is around um, the BAC, which stands for blood alcohol concentration. So everybody knows if you get caught drinking and driving, you get what? You get a DUI. Um, for some people, if you get too many DUIs, you lose your license. So if an individual is 18 and they get caught with a blood alcohol content of 0.2, is that, are they, is that a DUI? Are they considered drunk? No. Um, but, because they're supposed to be 21 years old to drink, there could still be a problem for them. But, the blood alcohol content, if it is 0 0.08 or higher, 0 0.08 or higher, so that's 0 0.09 on up, you can get a DUI. Because you are considered under the influence. Okay, it's not just alcohol that you can get in trouble for. You can get in trouble for if you are on prescription medication um, and you've taken too much medication. You can get in trouble for if you're um, intoxicated through marijuana. Same thing applies. Even though marijuana is legal, any type of alcohol in your bloodstream is going to, or drug in your bloodstream, is going to impair your driving and your decision making. So you want to make sure that you don't drink, um, whether you're... 21 or older while you are uh, behind a vehicle. That is very important. Some of the other challenging questions on the test are, what do you do in, if the road conditions are dangerous? So say it's raining outside, it's been raining for a while, heavy rain, and you can, what is called hydroplane. So hydroplaning is when your car is sliding on water and your car is just sliding. What do you do? Do you pump brakes really quickly? Do you slow down? What do you do? So the correct answer on the test is you allow the car to slow down. You take your foot off of the brakes and you let that car off the gas, I'm sorry, and you slow down um, accordingly. So that's a tricky question around hydroplaning. So you want to keep that in mind. Another one is what do you do, uh, let me check. What do you do if your car goes into a skid? If your car, you're, you're skidding, you're driving, something's going on ahead of you, and you start skidding and you're losing control of the car, what do you do? You turn your car in the direction of the skid or you turn your car in the opposite direction of the skid? You turn your car in the opposite direction of the skid. Take your foot off the brakes. You don't want to slam on brakes because that's going to probably cause your car to get into an accident. So you want to make sure you take your foot off the brakes and you steer away from that. What do you do if your tire blows out? You know, you're driving along and you know, sometimes it doesn't mean you have just have a nail in your tire, but your tire could blow up uh, for whatever reason. You need to, again, take your foot off of the gas and let that car slow down until you get to a safe place and then you want to be able to call for help. I always tell people, Try to get triple A if you can get triple A or somebody in your family has triple A so that if the tire blows out, it's not like you can put a spare on. If you don't have a spare, you got to replace that whole tire. So you want to make sure that you your spare, if you have one in your car, is always inflated and ready to go. You have to know how to change a tire. So that's important. You want to make sure, <clears throat> let me see, um, another one, when you are driving and you you're parking and you may be on an incline or on a hill. Um, you need to turn your wheels a certain way. And so instead of turning your wheels to the direction of the street, you want to turn your wheels into the direction of the curb. 
So, for example, if something happens and mechanisms in your car don't work and your car starts to drift and you don't put it fully in park, that car is going to hit the curb, jump the curb, versus going straight down the street and hitting a person or hitting something in front of it. Okay? It's still going to be important um, to make sure that you are, when you get in your car, uh, one of the questions on the test is, what do you do as soon as you get into the car? Um, it's not turn your music on. It, it, it's put your seatbelt on, not behind your back. Put your seatbelt on and you adjust your mirrors to make sure that you can see, right, both your side mirrors as well as your rear view mirror. That's very important. You want to make sure <clears throat> um, that you are paying attention when you're on the road. Oftentimes, it doesn't necessarily have to be rush hour traffic, but there are aggressive drivers on the road. So what do you do when you feel like you're being approached by an aggressive driver or somebody speeding up on your, your rear? No, it's not cuss them out. No, it's not blow your horn or flipping the bird. You need to pull back. You need to allow that aggressive driver to proceed. Too much conflict can come out of people who have road rage, people who have anger issues. You do not want to get caught up in that. When people ride up on my bumper now, I pull over. I put them off to ha hazard sometimes just to let them know, hey, I'm going to move out of your way and let you proceed. You don't know what's going on with other people. It's not for us to judge that, but it's for us to maintain our safety and the safety of, uh, of the vehicle that you're in, and especially if you have people in the car. One of the things I tell people all the time when you're driving, a vehicle is, is, can be dangerous. It can be used as a weapon. So you have to be very um, cautious and pay attention to what's going on around you and how you're utilizing that vehicle. You do not want to be speeding. Excess speed can cause you to not have the proper reactions. That is another question on the test. Um, when you're driving above the speed limit, your reaction is going to be different. Okay, I don't care how sharp you are, how quick you think, how long you've been driving. When you're in excessive speed, it's more difficult for that car to stop on a dime versus if you were driving um, the speed limit or below the speed limit. If the speed sign says 55, you know, that's the posted speed, what does that mean? That means that's the maximum speed that you're supposed to drive. Okay. Sometimes you'll find people that drive below that speed. If you're on the highway, you want to get around them. You know, the left lane of the highway is the fast, I'm saying this right, the left lane is, is the fast lane, and the right lane is the slow lane. So people who are driving below this posted speed limit usually tend to be on that right side. So don't fly past somebody on the right and be mad because they are in the right lane. So those are things that are just going to allow you to be more astute to what is going on when you're on the road. Again, um, <clears throat> highway driving is different from driving in, on the regular um, city streets. So traffic um, speeds change when you're in city limits. So for example, we have a lot of speed cameras in the city. You all know that. And those speed cameras will catch your car. So you could be driving along and the posted speed is 35. And then you go maybe two blocks and then that speed is now 25. If you're still going 35, you're going to get that red light ticket. Those red light tickets cost $40. If you don't pay that red light ticket within 30 days, it goes up. It goes up and they add and they add to that. So whenever you get a red light camera ticket, make sure you pay it because it will impact your registration on your car. It will impact um, your license ultimately if you do not pay those tickets in a timely manner and then you can also get assessed what they call um, uh, additional fines from the MVA and they are flag fees so those flag fees come addition to Baltimore City's fee of $40 if you don't pay that then the state of Maryland will assess a flag fee those flag fees can range from anywhere from $35 on up. So you want to make sure that you are paying for those um, tickets as soon as you get them. You don't want to wait and say, oh, I'm going to let them add up and pay them. You want to pay them online as soon as you get those tickets. So that's enough for now. I'll come back a little later and go over many more tips that you need to know on how to pass the permit test. Be safe.